Good morning, Vision. This is Youth Pastor Dennis. I am coming to you on the first, second Sunday of the 2021 year. I am coming to you recorded, and I apologize, I won't have much to do with this service on today because I'm still recovering from surgery, but recovering well nonetheless. I, I know that this service is in capable hands, so I am not worried about that. I do want you to remember two things though. Number one, we do not discount our praise and our worship on Second Sunday. We serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and he is worthy to be praised. And number two, it's Second Sunday, y'all. So sit back and enjoy the service. Stay safe and be well. Praise God, praise God. Lord, we thank you on today. We praise your name, God. Glory, hallelujah, God. We praise your name for today is Youth Sunday. Thank you for joining Vision Life Skills and Worship Center on today. And we're gonna get started this morning. We're gonna get started with our scripture and our prayer. Good morning, Vision Life Skills and Worship Center. What a blessing it is to be here with you all this morning, uh, virtually, of course. Um, I just want to give God glory this morning, and I just want to, I'm going to do the prayer for this morning, so if we could all bow our heads and lift our hands up to Christ. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for another year. 2021 is starting off really, really different, uh, Lord, but we trust you for this year, Lord. You blessed us with another 365 days, Lord, and we are open to you right now, Father God. We say have your way right now, Father God. We trust you for this year, Father God. Let nothing stand against us, Father God, this year. Father God, we pray that you go out and just touch those who need healing, deliver those who need to be delivered, open the hearts and minds of those who, who, who need you and call out to you, Father God. Use us, Father God, as you will. Let us be ambassadors for your will, for your kingdom, most of all, Father God. We are made for your pleasure. We are made for your purpose. And we are made for your glory. So, Lord, I pray that we uh, just enact um, the will of God on others' lives, that we don't force it on them, but we open it up for them. We say, we, I love you. Come on to church with me. Let's have Bible study right now. Let us have that kind of boldness in Christ that we have with everything else. So we can be bold in other things. We can be bold in you, Father God. So give us the gumption. Give us the strength and give us the endurance to persevere and live a more um, Christ-centered life, live a more evangelical life, to go out there and spread the gospel, trusting in you, Father God, most of all. Lord, we bless your name and Lord, we thank you. And most of all, we love you in Jesus name I pray amen so I'll also be bringing the scripture today um, this morning and the scripture is going to come from Matthew 6 um, 25 I'm just going to read the um, entire passage it is in the New Testament uh, it is called uh, it's titled do not worry and it goes as thus therefore I tell you do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink or about your body what you will wear is, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet our heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying at a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not spin or labor. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run around after all of these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The word of the Lord is blessed. Thank you. I love you all. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. We're going to prepare ourselves for a musical selection from the choir. Uh -oh.
service where everyone can participate. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for giving. Whatever the Lord has laid on your heart this morning for you to give, let it be a blessing to this ministry. There are many ways that you can give on today. You can give Givelify, Cash App, or our Ram Connect. Let's prepare for the stewardship affirmation. All right, Vision, it's time for the stewardship affirmation. In Proverbs 11.25, it says, A generous person will prosper. Those who refresh others will be refreshed. All right, so as we give today's tithes and offering, we are believing God for jobs and better jobs, bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, estate and inheritances, settlements, rebates and return, finding money, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received. We don't just give money, we give money with a mission, we give money with a mark, we give money with a purpose, we give money with assignment, and we give money, most of all, with a vision. Praise God, it is time.
musical selection from our wonderful choir, our speaker will come forth and bring the word. Still stands, great 
Great morning, Vision, and this is Youth Sunday, and I'm always excited about Youth Sunday. So one of the things that I try to tell myself is for Youth Sunday, I'm going to try to keep it in small bits, okay, so that you don't have to digest much, so that you can hear the whole thing throughout. So I want to take this time, and I want to, in many ways, I want to continue to unpack what I mean by uh, seize it. Okay, but I'm not going to go through the door that you expect me to go through. All right, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise. We thank you for the youth of this church, God, and then calls us to equip them, Lord, that they may be ready to run this race, God, to finish their course and, 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 and to have laid up for them, God, all the riches, all the rewards that you have for them because they made a decision in this life to do according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. I had been talking about, and I said uh, last week, and I talked about, uh, you know, since the time of John and until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Do you remember that? I hope that you do. And so in doing so, we found out or we realized that everything that is for you will not be given to you. And I think that is a profound statement. So I say it again this week, everything that is for you will not, young people, be given to you. You're gonna have to fight. You're gonna have to go after. And I'm not talking about the things that you wanna go after. The passion of this that I'm referring to is about the things of God, what God has for you, no matter what capacity that is, what God has for you. Now, many of the older people are going to do something. They're going to just start writing down some stuff and say, Pastor just said, I just need to go for it. That's not what I said. That's not what I said. I'm talking about getting serious about what God has for you, what it is that you are to do in Him, what it is that He has laid aside for you. And I'm saying to you, those things are is what I'm talking about. The heaven, kingdom of heaven has suffered violent for, and the violent take it by force. Because once a person has determined in their heart and they know this is of the Lord, and the Lord speaks that thing to them, now don't play the Lord for a fool. I'm not, I, I, I will say this over and over again because I don't know who may be listening to this, okay? Don't play God for an idiot. He's not talking about illicit relationships, He's not talking about all the craziness that we do. He's not talking about what you've been wanting since you was a little girl. I'm not talking about that. Hear me out in what I'm saying. I am saying to you, Vision, get serious about the things of God for your life. Last week, I said, look, we got to clean out our own backyard. We all got stuff. And guess what? That stuff is a hindrance. And what does it stop you from doing? Does it stop God from giving it to you? No, it stops you from going after what it is that you uh, need to go after. <clears throat> That's what it does. And so I want to talk about this week. This particular scripture is going to help me to help you to unpack this a little bit more. So let's take a look at this scripture. Let me see if I can pull it up here. This scripture says, 1 Peter 
uh, after you've swept your backyard, after you've confessed your stuff, swept it away. You can't leave it empty. You got to feel it with the right things or else the wrong things will come and feel it. And you're right back where you started. First Peter 2 and 9 says, but ye are a chosen generation, young people, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Okay, so I want to unpack for you and let you know what is so different about that scripture. What is so uh, peculiar about that scripture? Well, the first thing that it calls us both, right? It refers to us and it says you are both, you're, you're, you're royal, you're kingly, right? And then it also, remember, there's no male and female in the spirit. So when I refer to this, I'm referring to both, uh, to all of us. So it says you are a royal priesthood, right? But, uh, you know, you couldn't be both. The significance of that scripture when that was said was profound. Why was it so profound? Because in the ancient days, up until this time of Jesus Christ and the work that he did, there was no such thing. You were either a priest or you were a king. And it depended upon your genealogy. If you came from the tribe of Levi, then you were priest. If you came from the tribe of Judah, then you were considered of the royal tribe. So neither the twain really met up in such a way that, that now that Jesus Christ has been born and gone to the cross, sacrificed, died for us, he, brought, he ushers us into something that did not exist before. Okay, and that's what this scripture is about. So either you were a king or you were a priest. And now we have this whole notion, this whole ideal now that we are kings and priests. So the first thing you have to do is after you sweep your backyard is that you got to understand I'm royalty. So if you're royalty, what royalty do you know will let just anything walk up in your house, and I'm talking about your your house, okay? You don't allow just anything, anybody, any words or anything to come up in your house because when you recognize that you are both royal and a priest, you got to understand you have both authority, but yet at the same time, right, there is an authority about you in the natural, but there's also an authority about you also in the what? In the spirit realm. And so therefore, that's why we can call things out uh, uh, that, that are not the way they should be. That's why we can do that because of that authority that has been given to us. How is it that we're able to declare however it is in heaven, let it be so on earth and however it is on earth, let it be so in heaven. How else do you think we can declare those things if we were both king and priest? right? We have a scepter, but we also have power, all right, that comes from our words. And so we have been given this level of authority. So the first thing that you have to do is recognize the royalty that you are in. So your space in 2021 should not be filled with any tomfoolery, any foolishness, any silliness, and all of that stuff. Your space should be filled with things that are conducive for someone who is not only royalty, but who is also a priest, a royal priesthood. That's what it should be filled with. That's what you should have yourself uh, to prepare yourself for in 2021. And so what you go after is going to be very important because it's going to determine how you really see yourself. If you go after common things, then you deny the royalty that you are in both your kingship and your priesthood. If you just go after the things that uh, foolishness, silly things, you don't have, you, as a matter of fact, if you don't even have some kind of plan, then you, that you're, you are rejecting that you are both king and priest. You are rejecting it. So I'm saying to you, let's get our stuff together and act and be the royalty that we're supposed to be. Now, you've swept it out. If you were honest with yourself, you swept out a lot of stuff. 
Most of us swept out more than one stuff, if you were honest. But if you still want to fool yourself, you go right ahead because pasta is moving forward, okay? So we had to sweep out those things that we said we took them on, but they never should have been a part of us. So we swept it out of the way. But there are some things that we're going to take on. And why are we going to take on? So this Sunday, I only got one thing for you. I want you to take on the fact that you're both king and priest. I want you to unpack that because when you are seizing things, you better recognize and make sure it's going to fall in one of those categories. It is going to fit who you are. And if you're seizing things that don't fit who you are, you better let it go. Let it go. Sweep it right back out. Okay, so now we get into this whole thing and we're trying to find out how do we get here to both king and priest? Well, we know we got there through Jesus Christ, but where was the beginnings of this? How, you know, let's, let's, let's walk it out, right? Let's walk it out. Let's walk it through. So one of the first things that you need to understand is this whole idea of Judah. When we think of Judah, we think of the, the lineage uh, where uh, the, the, the kingship comes out of, right? That's who we think of with Judah. We think of praise, but we also think of the kingship because that's the tribe that Jesus Christ came from. And so therefore he is able now to lay hold of the fact that he came in the natural sense from a royal tribe. But then what is a king? What is royal? What is priesthood? What is it that it means in its most simplistic form in its most basic form that lets God know that you get it. Pastor's got this for you right now. I can unpack this in five minutes and be done. Listen, the reason why it's in the name. Everybody say it's in the name. We all know and we have associated the fact that Judah uh, means praise. I don't have anybody who among us who probably does not know Judah means praise. But you shortchange Judah when you start right there. Because the other thing that you need to know about Judah that's even more important than that, the other thing that you know about Judah is that Judah is part of a root word. All Hebrew words come and they form part of a root word. His name is Yahuda, Yahuda. And so when you think about his name, well, the root of his name, okay, I'm not talking about the meaning of his full name. I'm talking about the root of his name. It means, listen, to thank and to confess. How do you know you royalty? Royalty is always thanking God. Royalty is always thankful. Now, I'm not talking about the royalty of the world. I'm not talking about the, 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 the Roman kings, and I'm not talking about the, 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 the Egyptian kings. They do things in a worldly way. And most of us look at what they do, and that's how we define what royalty is. You would be wrong. Think about it. Look in the Bible and tell me how many times it put any kind of emphasis on uh, uh, David's royal garments, other than to say that he danced out of them. I'm waiting. See, many of us, when we get that connotation of royalty in our heads, we start to think about uh, just the power, just the authority, just the scepter. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we, get, we get drawn to the shiny objects, and that is not even the true basis of kingship in God. That's why you don't hear them talking much about his guard, because if looking the part, was, was the power of it. You'd read it all the time, but you don't read that. Look through there and tell me how many times you read about his garb. And when they talk about his garb, how is it discussed? How is it talked about? So for those of you who sees kingship, who see yourself as above others, because your royalty, that means you are in touch with the European royalty. You're in touch with the Roman royalty and the Egyptian royalty. You're not quite in touch with royalty as it means to God. Because royalty in God, when it says that he came from a royal priesthood, when it says that he came from the tribe whereby the, the king came out of, it is to thank and it is to confess. I'm always, the Bible says, always give thanks in all things. So here's the one thing that you have to need that you're going to fill your backyard with. You got to learn how to give thanks in all things. If you want to lay claim to your royalty, 
that means that you ought to always be thanking God for whatever it is that you go through. That doesn't mean that you take it on and you say, bring it on again, God. That's not what he's talking about. Use good biblical sense when you talk about the word of God. What he is saying to you, he said, in all things give thanks. Some of us, we don't have the food on our table uh, like we would like it. Some of us have had days where we go by hungry, but we don't sit up here and get an attitude, right? We don't sit up here and develop un, uh, 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 unhealthy habits, right? Of, 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 of stocking and storing and, and, and all of this thing to a fault because of that. That's not what we do. We say, God, I thank you. I did not have food on my table every time, but God, look at me. Do I look like I miss a meal? Oh, I wish somebody would come on and take this ride with me. God, I thank you. I don't have everything that I want to have. Uh, there's, some, there's some clothes I would love to bring from the store hanger to my closet. But guess what, God? I got all that I need. Can I get somebody to say thank you? I may not have a thousand suits in my closet, but you know what? I got enough suits, God, to do what it is that I need to do in you. Can I get somebody to say thank you? I'm just trying to birth. I'm trying to, 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 to get you to begin to birth out of your mouth right now and feel that place that you just swept out with the thankfulness that is indicative of royalty. Let God know that you recognize that you're royalty, that, that, that you know that all things come from God. All things come from God. All your provisions come from God. And God, if I did not have it, it was to show something in my life. It was to shape me. It was to mold me in such a way that I would be able to help somebody else out along the way. Anybody ever have an experience? And in that experience, you learn, you know what? I went through a hard thing. But coming out of that, I know what God would have me to do. I know what God would have me to do. When somebody tells me they're sick now, guess what? I don't fret. I don't do that. It's not woe is me anymore. I know how to pray about that situation because I've been through that situation. Can I get somebody to get some thankfulness going on? Now we're feeling it now. We're feeling the void with thankfulness. So you got to take the ride with me. We're feeling the void with thankfulness. God, I thank you. Look, I don't have the car that I want, but that's okay. My car gets me from point A to point B. God, I thank you. I thank you. And when there's something that I lack, I may not be able to have the money myself, but guess what? Somebody is going to give me a Holy Ghost handshake and they're going to be a part of doing what it is that you know that you are making a way for me to be able to do. God, I thank you. Come on, y'all. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. The key, the key, the root key to Judah and it being royalty and from the royalness that Jesus Christ has come from is thankfulness. It is thankfulness. God, and you know what? Jesus had to thank God. He was not born into the household uh, that did not come without drama. He was born to a woman who was not even married. His mama had to go through baby mama drama. Do you hear me? He was born in that way. They wanted to kill his mother. All right. But he didn't use that to get an attitude. He used that in order to understand who he really was. And he says, this man, Joseph, God, you're, you're saying he's my earthly father. He took time to understand who Joseph was. Because see, sometimes we have fathers that, are, are, that, that, are, that did not provide the seed that gave birth to us. I can't get no help because every now and then you need to be grateful that the, the, the man your mother married was a man who was willing to take you on as though his lot, stock, and barrel. Can I get some gratefulness going on? I'm trying to help you feel it, baby. I'm trying to help you feel it, okay? This is what I'm saying to you. We've got to learn in your royalty, royalty, the root of that, then it's not just to thank <clears throat> Everybody say to thank. It is also to confess. Why? Because Judah messed up. For those of you who are perfect people and you never need to repent, Judah messed up. And he didn't mess up a little bit. Judah messed up a lot. How did Judah mess up? Well, I'm not one to talk. But I got to tell this one right here. Dude ended up sleeping with his own daughter-in-law. I can't get no help. 
I know y'all don't know nothing about talking about folk. I know y'all don't know nothing uh, 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 about having so much drama in your family that half of it you can't even talk about. There ain't nobody going to understand this. Dude slept with his daughter-in-law. How did he end up sleeping with his daughter-in-law? Because he did wrong by her before he slept with her, before he was tricked into sleeping with her. He did wrong by her. Did I tell you Judah messed up real badly? He did. He did wrong by her. And she was trying to right the wrong. She said, okay, dude, you done met your match. You're not getting ready to get away with what you've done to me. One of your sons belong to me. And if it's not going to be your son, it's going to be you. Because you know what the Judaic law says. And he wasn't willing to do according to what the Judaic law said. So that girl, she pulled one on him. And guess what? He went for it lock, stock, and barrel. And at the end, he didn't get mad at her. He didn't have her killed. At the end, the whole incident reminded him he had to sweep his own backyard before he tried to sweep around that girl's backyard. He had to sweep around his own. So he confessed. He said, I was wrong. I am sorry. I am godly sorry. And his confession was so authentic before God. And his confession was so real before God, you all. Before God, it was so real. When he admitted his sin, guess what? God allowed, allowed a heart change in Judah. Confession is so important in the eyes of God. Listen, I'm getting ready to blow your mind. Confession is so important in the eyes of God that because of what Judah confessed, y'all not getting ready to hear me because you don't want to see yourself. You don't want to see yourself as having messed up. Because his confession was so authentic and so real, God bestowed his anointing, a monarchy, on the line rising from Judah. You think I'm telling a fib, I'm not. Because it was after that. And guess what? David came from that line. And guess what? Jesus came from that line. Why? Because the sign of royalty is not how many people you can gather under your wings to support you. It's not how many people you can tell what to do. It's not one gift, talent, and ability that you have that determines royalty. What determines royalty is thankfulness, and true repentance, confession of your sin. From that point on, the hand, the heart of God was moved and he bestowed royalty in this dude's life. I wish somebody would grab hold of that right now today with your prideful self. I wish you would grab hold of it in a way that you cause God to do something in your lineage that had never been done. And now today, because of it, Jesus is both king and priest. And first Peter reminds us of the lineage of which we truly come. He says we are both king and we are both priest. Feel your space in your, 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 if you want to put some stuff in your trunk, put that in it. So today, yesterday we just swept because we recognize, but today, today start to feel it because you're going to seize it after a while. And you can't seize what you can't see. 
Remove the shells from your eyes today and go in your closet with God and confess in such a way. Ask God to prepare. Say, Lord, prepare me to repent before you so that you can have a repentance so authentic that it moves the hand of God. Well, what about the priest, Pastor? How do they fit in here? You remember Levi? You remember Levi? Levi was third son of Leah. So by the time he comes along, we got the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He was the third son of, of, of Jacob, right? He was the son of Leah. The next Levi. We know, excuse me, for priest. I'm getting ready to blow your mind again. Levi is the derivation, it is derived from Yilawe. Yilawe. What is Yilawe? Yilawe means he will join. And this reflects Leah's hope that her husband, Jacob, would join her in this walk. I want to talk to the women for a minute. When you have your children, I know we are resilient. We can have the hand, we, you know, you got three children you walk around with. You put one on one hand, one on the other, and we're so resilient, we know how to grab that third hand so that we can walk with all of them together. Even if we got to put one in our arm, we know how to walk with all three together. Am I right? You know I'm right about it. You know I'm right about it. Okay? But is it easier when your husband accompanies you and he also take the hand of the children and you all walk together? So Levi, in his yellow way, meaning he will join, means Layla walked to hold the third one. So what are you saying? Each one of us are not only kings, we're also priests. And as a priest, I don't come before you in my own strength. I come before you believing that I have laid before the Lord and the Lord has joined me. As a priest, I'm not talking about the leadership team. I'm talking about each and every one of us, so both kings and priests. We're both kings and priests. Oh God, I'm feeling something right now. And I believe that God is going to come alongside me in everything that I set out to do in 2021. Right now, if you ain't called hold, I'm feeling my space. I believe that whatever, that's why God says, since the time of John the Baptist and until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violent, violence and the violent take it by force. Why? because they know when they go get it, God is with them. That's why he didn't stop them, because he's with them. Y'all better hear what I say. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, when you go and seize it and when you go get it, you think you're going by yourself? How do you think you even got into heaven to take it? You had to have a royal escort. Oh my God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Levi, third child, lineage of the priesthood. Judah, thankful, confessor, who caused God to put the scepter into his lineage and said it would never be removed. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today, I'm through.
If you did, you didn't get full of pride. You swept last week. And those of us that swept in all sincerity know we had some empty spaces we need to fill. But you're going to feel it first, knowing who you are, so that you can identify the things that you need to seize. You are a king. You are, excuse me, a royal priesthood. You've got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit walking alongside you every day of your life. Do you hear me? Open up your mind. Just start to give God. Remind God how God is sorry. So that you can see him and identify those things that you need to see. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for this word today. It's still about season, but it's preparing us so that we can recognize it. Because as a royal priesthood, we can't lay hold of just any and everything. But these are things that actually belong to us. And we can't recognize them. And we can't see them because of the stuff and the years and the bad habits and ways and the bad heart. But God, in 2021, we started early. Cleaning out the junk in our trunk and moving forward to feel it with the things, God, that belong to us. We give you glory for this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I can't even wait to come before you. Third Sunday is going to be my last Sunday. I'm packing this. I can't wait. God is good. Amen.